Welcome to the second episode of the 2021 Puzzle Advent Calendar. Between December 1st and 24th, many different puzzle creators and YouTubers have collaborated to bring you daily videos across different channels, each video featuring a new and unique puzzle that has never been seen before. This is the fourth year of the collaborations, and I'd like to sincerely thank everyone who has put effort into making this year's calendar special. And don't forget to subscribe to ND Puzzles so you don't miss the calendar's third episode coming out tomorrow. You may remember that in the 2019 advent calendar I showed this, the waterfall cube extreme. Then, a year later but not in any advent calendar, I showed an unbanded version called the waterfall cube ultimate. At the back of my mind, I always planned to make an even crazier version with split corners. However, while the previous waterfall cubes were 3x3 extension mods, this new puzzle would need a fully original mechanism which I wasn't a fan of, so I let the idea sit and never did anything about it. Sometime later though, a new puzzle was released that changed the game. This is the 40mm 4x4 cube, produced by LimCube. It's kind of expensive for an extension based puzzle, but it would finally allow me to realize my previous idea, which I decided to call the Waterfall Cube Supreme. What makes this cube great for extension mods is it's very stable, it's not loose or rattly, and it just doesn't pop if you use it normally. So overall, while it's not as great of a turner as the 3x3 I used to build the previous two waterfall cubes, it's still a very good base puzzle. Also, once I got to the design phase of the Supreme, not only did I split these corners, but I also decided to split these edge parts for better maneuverability. However, I didn't want to just reuse this design as as you can see, this puzzle is kind of loose, the pieces just have gaps in between them, it's very rattly, and honestly, I didn't feel like this design would scale very well. So I actually completely redesigned it to create this, which is very stable, no gaps between pieces, overall it just feels like a much higher quality item in every way. And it's also physically a bit larger than this other version. The reason why I went to the trouble of completely redesigning the ultimate is that if I was going to create a much larger puzzle with an insane amount of parts, I couldn't afford to have to reprint entire layers because I got the clearances wrong. So I was able to fine tune everything on this puzzle, which went through a bunch of iterations. And because this turns well, I know that the Supreme that I'm going to make with this mechanism is also going to turn well. So let's take a look at the 3D printed parts I have for the Supreme. Here's the 4x4 I'm going to be using for this mod. You can see that I've already taken all the stickers off, and I've also sanded down all of the faces such that the 3D printed parts will adhere better. So as on a 3x3, let's glue all the corner extensions on first. Alright, so here all of the corners are glued on. Honestly, they went on pretty decently. Fitment is pretty good, I think, on most of them at the very least. So now I'll glue on all of the edges of this type, and then I'll get back to you and we'll see how it turned out. 
So after I glued all of the parts on, uh, unfortunately these center slice turns were very catchy and basically impossible to make. This is because a lot of these center parts were printed with the center slice being on the build plate. So that means the fillets here just weren't brilliant. So what I did is I took a blade and I shaved off a bit off of each corner off of all of these edges and every single one of these as well. So this turns actually more or less okay now. You can feel it catch a little bit, but you're, it's never at risk of popping or anything. Whereas with uh, these turns, they're not as good. They're certainly a lot better than they were before, where the entire cube would just lock up if you tried to make any turn. But these pieces still pop out eventually, so if that happens, I'll just look at the piece that pops out and uh, shave off its corners a bit more. But for now, at the very least, the puzzle is usable on all of its axes, as long as you just are careful with what you do. And then these outer 4x4 turns have always been just generally pretty good, because the cuts here are curved. Alright, so you can see I haven't actually glued on this set of centers or this set of centers. And that's because I feel that uh, not doing that just makes it easier to put in all of these outer layer pieces and then I could probably glue them on separately or something. So I'm going to put in all of the pieces for one of these layers and then glue in these centers and then we'll see how it turns out. And then if it's all good I'll just I'll do the other side as well. After assembling the Waterfall Cube Supreme and scrambling it a bit, I ended up remaking all of the split edge pieces, removing some material in order to allow the cube to scramble more thoroughly without having any illegal moves. That's why the edges have their weird shape. Unfortunately, due to the material removed from these edges, if I tilt the cube a certain way during a 3x3 turn, some parts have a small chance of dislodging. It's pretty easy to avoid this happening, but it's just something you have to keep in mind while using the cube. The 2x2 turns are still a bit catchy, but definitely usable. The outer layer does show some space left in between parts, which is probably just my printer being tuned slightly incorrectly. This didn't happen on the Waterfall Cube Ultimate, but since the Supreme is larger, it seems to have amplified the discrepancy. The outer layer turns are alright, although definitely less smooth than the Waterfall Cube Ultimate feels. Generally though, the key thing is that all of the cube's turns are perfectly usable, which means I can do a proper scramble and solve on it. All of that will be indoors, as this cube is way too big to keep in frame here while being scrambled. In general, this cube took a very long time to print and build, and it's the largest puzzle I've made in quite a while. It would have been nice if it could have been smaller, but this was the minimal size at which I thought the mechanism would be stable enough. A flaw of the waterfall cubes in general so far is the need to solve inner cuboid layers that can add a lot of busy work to the solve without providing anything new conceptually. It's amplified on the Supreme where you have four inner layers to take care of, as opposed to only three on the Extreme and Ultimate. Maybe at some point I can make scaled down versions of the Ultimate and Supreme that don't have the inner 3x3 or 4x4, thus making for a more compact and less annoying puzzle. Those thoughts aside, let's go scramble the Waterfall Cube Supreme. As you can see, this cube is genuinely very big. Not only does it fill up most of the frame, but it's also, just in general, a much bigger puzzle than the older Waterfall Cube Ultimate. And this isn't actually the original size of the Waterfall Cube Ultimate. The original one looked like this, which was even smaller. So if we get the new one out of the way, you can just see how much of an upgrade this is. So that's how much bigger it is. It's just going to be a handful. In any case, uh, my strategy for scrambling this is not to purely use 2x2 uh, two two or 3x3 three three moves. My strategy is to try and use a healthy mix of 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three moves because I think that's where this cube really shines and that's where the unique solving experience is. 
Because if you scramble it just like a 2x2, two two, then like... This is... Sure, this looks very interesting, but this isn't going to be very nice to solve. And then if you scramble it with the 3x3 three three moves, then it's just going to be the exact same as this. So, I would say that by far the most interesting way of scrambling it, even if a bit difficult, is going to be just trying to make best use of both the 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three moves. Let's see how it goes. You may notice that during the scramble, and then later during the solve, I spend quite a long time just looking around the cube, looking for turns that can be made. This was something I had to do on the Waterfall Cube Ultimate, but it's a lot more extreme on this uh, Supreme version, simply because the 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three turns don't really mesh that well, so really it's not that common that you actually have cuts that line up. Honestly, the scramble itself was very fun. Normally on a cube you just turn pieces randomly, or with some kind of strategy. But on this, it's kind of a puzzle of its own to scramble in, which I thought was uh, kind of fascinating. Alright, so it appears that the outer layers are too far gone from there even to be a point in me trying to uh, scramble this cube as a bandage 2i2. You might have noticed that I didn't really scramble these inner layers that much, and that's because these are just the inner layers of a 4x4x6. I know how to solve a 4x4x6, it's really irrelevant to the solving process of this. But yeah, I think this is a fairly healthy mix of 3x3 and 4x4. So I'm, I honestly have no idea how hard this is going to be to solve. It could be deceptively easy because, bear in mind, when a puzzle has this few configurations, like sometimes the only way in is the only way out. So all paths will lead to that. But I have no idea. I also should have probably tried to scramble these colors more before shapeshifting it. And maybe I'll still play around with it a little bit to try and do that, but... Actually, no. It's good enough, I think. Yeah. Alright, so... Uh, let's get to solving it. My first step is probably going to be just... Um, pair like pieces. And get at least one of the outer layers... To be... In the cubic shape again, because... That should make permuting the other layer a lot easier. Because I've solved the Waterfall Cube Ultimate a lot, I've gotten used to the patterns that can show up, and I've devised a general strategy to get something back to cubic shape, which is to just break up any pair of two petals that occurs. This is obviously made more difficult by the presence of the split parts, but still, that was the general strategy I employed here, and it honestly worked out pretty decently.
here we have one face back into its cubic shape. I really should have put more effort into scrambling these colors around prior to shape-shifting the cube, but I'm sure it won't make much of a difference towards the end. And if anything, I might try re-scrambling it off camera with uh, a bit of just scrambling without shape-shifting first and see if it makes a difference. But in any case, this top layer is now cubic. Now I have to resolve this, which may or may not be difficult. This is my first solve of the cube in this state with stickers on. I have solved the cube with no stickers before, which just meant by shape, and that led to me making a few design changes to these parts. But this is the first time I've, I've tried solving it in this state. So I really have no idea how difficult this is going to be to resolve and then how difficult the colors are going to be to resolve. So that should be very interesting. Let's see. This step of the solve involved a lot of trial and error. In fact, it was mostly trial and error. The trial was to find another position that, from which I could break more of the Waterfall Cube Ultimate type petals apart. And the error was the fact that for basically no matter where I went, there was only a few turns available, unless I happened to be in a state where more of the top and bottom layers was intact. In general, the step of the solve was not the most frustrating, but it was the second most frustrating step. On the Waterfall Cube Ultimate, it was never really that hard because you always generally had access to at least some movement. You don't get that luxury on the Waterfall Cube Supreme because the presence of the split parts, especially when they're split apart, tends to just make it so that you can't make a 3x3 turn. I also wonder to what extent it's possible to branch out and have multiple solutions in this step because the state space at every step was honestly fairly limited. I'm sure by now you must have noticed that several times during the solve, the cube actually popped. One of the small split in half edge pieces just occasionally falls out. Um, so that's because of those same edge pieces actually. The fact that I cut out so much material from their central area means that mid-turn in a 3x3 turn, whatever piece is just around the rails actually has room to slide out. This doesn't really render the puzzle unusable because it's very easy to avoid. All I have to do is uh, for the 3x3 turns, whichever turn is happening, I have to tilt that slightly upwards and then nothing ever falls out. It's just uh, when you're solving something on camera and you're also frustrated because you're not sure how to solve it, uh, it kind of sometimes lost track, which is why during this step, you'll see probably the most amount of pop pieces that I encountered during this entire solve. And finally, after much ado, here we have a shape that should be fairly easily solvable, to my understanding at the very least. All I have to do is uh, turn these parts Yeah, as I thought, it would be fairly simple and intuitive to get it back into a cube from that shape. So that took a very long time, mostly because I had absolutely no real previous strategy. This was all based on just intuitive movements that 
I'd learned based on solving the Waterfall Cube Ultimate. But at the same time, it was made more difficult because this puzzle is a lot more bandaged when scrambled due to the fact that you have these 2x2 turns interspersed with the 3x3 turns, thus making it overall quite difficult to maneuver. I think I'm going to take a short break as that genuinely took a very long time. And then I will get to solving all of the colors. I'm probably going to just solve the inner colors off camera as this is just going to be the center four layers of a 4x4x6 which is not very interesting <laughs> I would imagine. And then I will leave these outer layers unsolved because that is where the meat of the solve is. So I'll see you then. Alright, here we are. I have solved the inner four layers. It was actually a little more involved than I thought because uh, I had to solve all of these 4x4 centers and pair these uh, 4x4, I guess you'd call them dedges, if you go by that one old tutorial. But what I didn't actually account for somehow is the fact that... Let me make a comparison so that this is easier to understand. If you offset the top and bottom layer of the ultimate by 9 degrees, or 18, I'm not sure which one it is, uh, then this becomes a fully functional 3x3, not bandaged in any way. However, if you twist the top and bottom layers of this cube by 9 degrees or 18, whichever it is, it becomes a fully functional 3x3, which, as I'm sure you've already figured out, is just these outer layers here. However, if you unoffset the layers and just have it cubic, then it's a fully functional 2x2. Two two. Now, a fully functional 3x3 three three combined with a fully functional 2x2 two two at such an angle doesn't make a fully functional 4x4. Four four. So it was actually kind of tricky to get everything paired together because I had to keep maneuvering these outer layers in a way that will allow the movements I needed to make. I ended up just employing the basic strategy of pairing all of the double parts together to essentially just reduce it to the inner three layers of the ultimate because I knew how to solve that and uh, it went relatively smoothly from there. Thankfully I did not get the 3x3x4 parity where uh, this entire section is flipped because I don't remember how to fix that. I haven't solved the 3x3x4 in about it's like six years and that would have just been an extra thing preventing me from actually getting to the meat of this puzzle which is now going to be solving all of the colors on the top and bottom layers. Uh, I don't know if I really have a strategy for this. On the ultimate this was always actually kind of a simple and intuitive process. You just kind of uh, I guess do the corners and then you pair, just kind of just pair stuff up. This might be more difficult, this might be easier, because think about it this way, you have more movement available, you're not as restricted. But at the same time, there's more parts that you could mess up, and you have to get them all right. So genuinely, I have no clue. Let's see. So at this point, I'm almost done pairing all of the split-in-half pieces up. Just for clarity, 
on the ultimate, the pieces that are split up would be these large corners and these interestingly shaped center edge type pieces. Obviously the whole point is to reduce this to an ultimate since I kind of know how to solve that. So I've paired up everything except for this, which is wrong, as we can see, we put it here. See, the, these colors don't match up with this, even though this is the yellow side. And the other one that doesn't match is this red and blue split corner. So those are the two corner splits that don't match. And then on the other side, there's actually some center edge splits that don't match. You can see this also doesn't match with somewhere with this. So the goal is going to be to not lose track of these two because they look just like the rest of the cube frankly and uh, since we have a four cycle that should be easier to deal with than a three cycle or a two cycle which may or may not be possible but the goal is to basically orient these two split corners and the split edges of interest onto a single axis so that we can finagle them into the correct positions and this shall be done using mostly 3x3 moves. The beauty of the 3x3 moves is that they don't mess up the split parts in any way so you essentially have free reign to do whatever. I'm thinking if I should grab some washi tape to put on this and this to not lose track of it because Honestly, I'm absolutely sure I'm going to lose these parts. Yeah, I went for the washi tape because I genuinely did not feel like losing any progress I've already made. But this should genu genuinely make this a, a lot easier to maneuver. This step of the solve took a very long time because I really had no idea what was doing and again it was just a lot of trial and error. I ended up uh, stopping the recording and just uh, taking it, trying to solve the cube on my own because it was getting kind of frustrating to look around the camera. And uh, I did that for several more steps later where I just found it a lot easier to look at the cube without having it to be on camera. However, I did eventually figure out how to swap the corners that I needed to, so let's see how that happened. Alright, it has been a very long time since I last checked in with you, and that is because I spent all of that time figuring out how to swap basically two of these split pairs. So for example, just swapping this with this. Obviously a four cycle is trivial but a two cycle not so much i'm not going to show you exactly what i did because I, well i would have to physically go back on the puzzle and do that it's not a fully fleshed out method but basically what i ended up doing was uh kind of splitting all of these parts apart until i ended up with something like a ninja star pattern on both the top and the bottom and then what i did was I actually turn the ninja star by an eighth of a turn and that ended up uh, making it so that all of these corners can be paired correctly. Actually I was thinking I'd put them all into position but now I realize there's really no point until I pair all these edges as well. So I guess I'll get to pairing the edges. Alright, I have taken a look at the situation with these uh, edge pairs, the split edges. So, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier or not, but basically before I did all of that tomfoolery with the split corners, I also had a two cycle with these. And now that I've solved all of the corner pairs, it's actually a three cycle between this, this, and this. However, the beauty of this is, I believe, to my understanding, I should be able to solve this situation with a simple 3x3x2 cuboid algorithm. Which just reminds me how impressed I was when solving this thing. Just how useful the cuboid algorithms generally were. So let's get to it. Alright, I 
genuinely have no idea how, but I messed up the 3x3x2 algorithm. It's not a big deal though, because I'd kind of describe this as a sticky situation in a way. It's not this specifically, but like what can happen on these cubes. It's basically, if you're in an easily solvable state, it will be easily solvable. If you're in a difficult to solve state, it will always be difficult to solve unless you do a bunch of stuff. If you're used to the square one, you'll understand the final uh, edge swap algorithm as one of the difficult to solve type of situations where no simple move can just do it. You have to do a bunch of stuff. It's the same with this, where even if though I messed up my algorithm, it's not a big deal because it's kind of still in a pretty decent situation overall. But I believe I should be able to relatively easily pair all the edges at this point. Part of what I like about solving these first and then these last is the problem with these, solving these is maneuverability. However, it's not as big a deal with these because you're able to use 3x3 three three turns to shuffle pieces around, thus making the process a lot just better. And there we are. All of the edges and corners are paired correctly. This was a massive undertaking and I had to figure out a lot. Mostly to figure out how to do the two cycle for these things, but I'd imagine now that I know that, um, the solve would be a lot quicker because I'd be able to simply use my prior knowledge rather than having to figure everything out. I do have to solve this central slice, which I'm not too concerned about. But anyway, I've been solving this today for many hours. I am going to come back tomorrow in order to just put all of the colors in their spots. Honestly, if it's anything like the actual Waterfall Cube Ultimate, that was mostly just a satisfying part of the solve. Not really difficult or too challenging. So when I come back tomorrow, it's most likely just going to be a little bit of finagling. And it'll all be decent. Or maybe not, maybe just the fact that uh, these 2x2 two two type moves are available makes it so that the scramble is going to be more difficult. I don't know. But it does appear that my initial theory about the 2x2 two two moves being available, making the solve easier, is completely false. No, this has been just a mess. <laughs> a good mess. A I've had a lot of fun, but it has been very difficult nonetheless. So let's cut to tomorrow. It is the next day. Let's first solve all of these double corners. Actually, now that I think about it, the proper cuboid strategy would be to solve the edges on one layer first. So let's do that real quick. Now all of the corners along with the first layer edges are solved, so now I simply have to solve the last layer edges, and again hopefully I don't get that 3x3x4 three by three by parity, because that would suck. I don't think I should though, because I'll just need to swap these edges and then swap these, which means it's an even amount of algorithms. And now all of the cuboid 3x3x2 type pieces are solved. We have all of our cuboid corners and our cuboid edges. 
So now all that's left is to solve the waterfall cube ultimate type pedal pieces, these and these, that are directly equivalent to these and these. I have so on the waterfall cube ultimate, it wasn't that difficult. It was actually a bunch easier than on a regular square one, just because you have a lot more degrees of movement. I have no idea if that's going to carry over to this, because obviously this has the 2x2 two two turns mucking everything up a little bit. But we shall see. I don't think it's going to really be that bad compared to everything else we've done so far. Well, this is the last of the time-lapse post-commentaries, so I guess I might as well just say that the reason why I put a lot more time into documenting this cube solve than I normally would is because I truly believe this is a very special cube, and it's almost kind of wasted on me because I'm not really that great of a solver. So my goal with this video was to show you as much of the experience as I possibly could because it's unlikely that anyone else will ever get to solve this cube. So I might as well do whatever I can. I hope it was enjoyable for you. Alright, so at this point I have paired all of the pedals except for four of them. Um, the important bit is to have two of each chirality. So rather than four of this type, I want two of this type and two of this type because my algorithm to swap four of these around is actually uh, two two cycles. So now all I have to do is do some setup moves to put them all into the same orbit. Which, uh, one thing that's a lot easier I've found on this than on the ultimate is on this I'm able to actually use uh, two by two moves in order to act as setup moves. Whereas on this I'd have to offset the layers and do something like this for the setup moves, which uh, just is a lot harder to keep track of so this last step is made a little easier on this cube So all I have to do now is position all of the pedals correctly Alright, setup moves complete, even though the cube looks like a goddamn mess right now. It should just be one simple algorithm to uh, bring all of the pedals into their correct position. And this is the exact same algorithm as it is on the basic square one. It's actually a lot more useful on the waterfall series than it is on the real square one. And here we are, this massive beast of a puzzle has been reduced to a simple 2x2. Two two. I have no other words. Let's just get to it. And here we are. The mighty Waterfall Cube Supreme has been solved. That took a very long time, but it was also very fun and very rewarding. Overall, I am very glad that I made this puzzle, and as it's kind of always been at the back of my mind for a very long time, but I always viewed it as kind of like something far off in the future. But now that I actually went out and made it, this was a ton of fun. Anyway, some final thoughts on the Waterfall Cube Supreme. This is most likely going to be the highest order waterfall cube. If I design more entries in the series later, they'll likely go in the other direction as I'd like to downsize the waterfall cube ultimate and supreme to get rid of the excessive inner layers. I already have a plan for a slimmer waterfall cube ultimate and soon I'll be ordering the base puzzle for that extension mod. I don't think the waterfall cube supreme will ever be publicly available in its current state. As you saw, pieces can pop out more easily than I'm comfortable with, but I also can't prevent them from doing so without causing some unintentional bandaging. It was kind of frustrating to solve in general, and it took a very long time, but it was a ton of fun, and I'm glad I took the time to make this beast. 
Don't forget to subscribe to ND Puzzle so you don't miss episode 3 of the Puzzle Advent Calendar tomorrow. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you later this month. Take care.